Now involving aluminum chloride, again, this is a classic, uh, so therefore we have to memorize it. We say that Al3+, plus, the charge density is very high. In fact, it is much higher than Mg2+, plus, so it has an even greater polarizing power. It can pull the electron cloud of Cl- minus towards itself, so much that the electron cloud of your Cl- minus, uh, will overlap with the electron cloud of Al3+. Plus. That means it is so strong and it's so polarizing and you pull the electron cloud of Cl- minus towards itself until the electron cloud overlaps with its own electron cloud. So once this happens, then this is officially counted as a covalent bond because covalent compounds sharing of electrons by overlapping of orbitals or overlapping of electron cloud. So this is now officially considered as a simple covalent compound because this bond it is a covalent bond. That's why we say that this is a covalent bond with ionic character. Ionic character because Al will be a positive charge and my Cl will be a minus charge. So this is officially a simple covalent compound with a bit of ionic character. Pretty interesting. And please remember this is a classic example. When you see aluminum chloride, please remember that this is a simple covalent compound. It is no longer an ionic compound. Now, if I compare this with Magnesium chloride and aluminum chloride. I think both of these is in your notes. You can just refer to them. The difference between two, these two is Mg2 plus has high charge density, polarizing, can pull electron cloud of Cl minus towards itself. But these two guys are still discrete ions. That means there's no overlap of orbital. Mg2 plus and Cl minus, they're still separate. So this is ionic bond with covalent character. So magnesium chloride, it is still ionic. It is an ionic compound. Now, aluminum chloride is Al3 plus has an even higher charge density, even more polarizing than Cl minus, pull electron cloud towards itself until there's orbital overlap between Al3 plus and Cl minus. So now this bond becomes a covalent bond. So aluminum chloride is now officially counted as a simple covalent compound or a simple molecule. So the issue it just boils down to in terms of the extent of the distortion of the electron cloud, uh, whether is there orbital overlap or not. If there's pulling of electron but no orbital overlap, then this is ionic bond with covalent character. But if there's a pulling of electron cloud until there's orbital overlap, then this is counted as a simple molecule. Of course, the next thing that we will ask is, how do I know whether is there orbital overlap or not? Because we don't do calculation. We don't, uh, we don't know how much of this distortion will be so how do I know whether is there distortion with no overlap or is there distortion with orbital overlap, correct? So that's a very valid question. Eh? This is the reason why there are certain things we need to memorize. We start off with aluminum chloride. We need to know aluminum chloride. This is a classic example involving pulling of electron cloud, distortion of electron cloud with orbital overlap. So we use this as a basis. Then we try to link it to other compounds. Some of it we can make deductions. So we use this aluminum chloride as a basis, okay? So this one we need to know. Now if I compare this with other halides, aluminum fluoride, aluminum bromide, aldide, and so on, then can I make use of what we know? We know that aluminum chloride, there's distortion of electron cloud, there's orbital overlap. So can I use it to deduce what is the nature of aluminum bromide, aluminum aldide? This set is easier. Let us talk about this first, because if you consider Cl minus, Br minus, Al, uh, I minus. Cl minus, Al, Br minus, and I minus for my halide. I know that chloride, it is large enough and it is polarizable enough for there to be a distortion of electron cloud and there's orbital overlap. Now, if I consider things like Br minus and I minus, they're even bigger in terms of size, which means that they're even more polarizable. The electron clouds are even more uh, easy to distort as compared to Cl minus, which means that if Cl minus, there's distortion of electron cloud with orbital overlap, Br minus and I minus definitely will be the same. And the extent of the orbital overlap will be even greater because Al3 plus will be able to pull the electron cloud of Br minus and I minus, which is bigger and more polarizable, to an even larger extent than Cl minus. So if Cl minus is covalent or forms a covalent bond with Al3 plus, Br minus and I minus will do exactly the same thing. Correct? So you notice we can actually deduce based on what we understand from aluminum chloride, which is what we memorize. I can link it to aluminum bromide, aluminum aldide. So we would expect ALBR and Al, 
AlB are bond to be a covalent bond. Aluminum aldine to be also a covalent bond. So therefore, your aluminum bromide, aluminum aldine, they should all be simple molecules. Now, how about fluoride, aluminum fluoride? Aluminum fluoride, we know that F- is smaller, less polarizable. So now the issue uh, is, I know that it is less polar polarizable, not so easy for me to pull the electron cloud, but what is the extent of it? So does it mean that if it is less polarizable, less distortion of electron cloud, uh, it means that there's no orbital overlap? So we can't really tell. So what we will have to do is, we have to memorize that aluminum fluoride, it is an ionic compound. We don't really need to do a lot of memorizing, all right? Involving aluminum chloride, we use it as a basis. So this one we need to know. Aluminum fluoride, we also need to know because they are in a haline. The rest of it actually we can deduce. And most of the other instances, what the question will do is they'll give you the physical property. And based on the physical property, we can deduce whether is it ionic bond or ionic bond with covalent character or whether this is a covalent bond with ionic character.